Hey, good morning, everybody. It's great to be finally back with you again. I missed all of you, really I did. And I wanna thank everyone who kept in touch with me and encouraged me these past few weeks. Your prayers, your friendship has meant a great deal to me. But my recovery this time has been more challenging than it has been in the past. And just about everything that could have gone wrong actually did. Anyway, I had originally intended to begin a brand new series this morning called From Christ to the Creeds. It was a series that was intended to help us to see what the, what the Father was trying to do through the New Testament and Jesus' earthly life and ministry was the 2.0 version of what he had been trying to do all along in the Old Testament through a called out and set apart people. The plan was to begin with Jesus to walk us through the early church years in Jerusalem before their outward expansion to Judea, Samaria, and the rest of the Roman world. So it would have been kind of a sort of a New Testament survey that traced the church's development mostly from a Jewish sect to a more Gentile church and how that church adapted to these people from different cultures and backgrounds and how they met the challenges of their early persecutions and ultimately how they found their way in becoming its own faith tradition. But during my, my time in recovery, I had a chance for some deep reflection and some prayer. So I've got something different in mind for us this morning. Let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll take a look at our passage together. Lord God in heaven, it is an honor to continue our worship today by giving you our attention. I pray that as we open up your sacred texts, that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what you have to say to your church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, our text this morning is going to come from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, for those of you who would like to follow along. Where the preacher begins. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time to be born, a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to tear down and a time to build. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. There's a time to scatter stones and a time to gather those stones together. There's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to search and a time to give up. There's a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend. There's a time to be silent and a time to speak and a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time for war and a time for peace. Well, we might not agree with the preacher's assessment that there is always a time to hate or a time to kill, or that war is inevitable or unavoidable. But at this point, the preacher's not just wondering about the inevitability or futility of these things. He's wondering whether or not there's any purpose to life at all. And it's not until practically the last verse of this book that he finally realizes that life does indeed have a purpose. But here we're simply thinking about these things as part of the natural rhythms that for the most part occur in life as we know it. And the preacher goes on to say that what do workers gain from their toil? I've seen the burden that God has laid on, on the human race, which would be the cost associated with our sin. But he's made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the heart of the human being. And yet, no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. Now, I know that there is nothing better than for people to be happy and to do what is good while they live. And the preacher goes on to suggest that, there, that time binds us like the seasons of the year. And with these seasons come their natural limitations, limitations that create organization and determine usefulness by setting an expiration date. And we know this because we have all seen that, there's, that life seems to be full of divine moments. For example, we know that God has set the days of our lives and the boundaries of our habitation. Now it's been my experience, and the biblical story testifies, that God calls men and women at just the right time in order to advance his agenda. God is not a controlling God, but in his overwatch, he never gives up on us. He hopes all things, he believes all things, he endures all things, because God is love, and his love never fails. God is our good shepherd who leads us and guides us. He uses his rod and his staff to give us a little nudge from time to time in order to keep us moving in the right direction. And it is our job as followers to be sensitive to, God, to God's leading. Now, this is an age-old story that's told throughout the Bible. And we see that God has called Noah at just the right time. That he called Abraham and Aaron and Moses at just the right time. That he called Samuel and the other prophets at their appointed times for a particular people at a particular, for a particular purpose. And at just the right time, the Father sent the Son into the world. 
But even Jesus knew that towards the end of his earthly ministry, that it was expedient that he go. For truly every ministry has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so he says in John's gospel, very truly I tell you that it is good that I am going away. For unless I go away, another will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And so it is that even in Jesus' physical absence, the work of the Trinity continues. And when God called me to be your pastor, I was as certain then as I am today, both of that call and that it was for a particular season. God gave me vision and used my particular gifts and strengths to lead this church through its pandemic. And those gifts and that vision served God's purpose for a time. Now, as I look back at, at the lives that we have touched together through the various ministries that have been ongoing, I am beyond blessed. And I could name them all for you now, but if you've been around for any length of time, that would seem to be unnecessary. That those ministries have not impacted our Sunday worship time together is not the point, because even through them, God has been at work transforming lives. And it has been my joy and my privilege on occasion to see some of the fruit of that transformation as friends have dropped by and spent some time in my, in my office sharing their stories. And that will always be my great reward. But I have also come to realize that my gifts and my physical abilities have taken us as far as they can. I'm 70 years old now. I have a heart condition. I've got two femoral bypass surgeries under my belt, and I'm a bladder cancer survivor. These things have made me painfully aware that it is indeed that there is indeed a time and a purpose for everything under heaven. Now, during these past few weeks, I've had to wrestle with God's calling on my life and consider the wisdom that my children and my family have been impressed upon me and encouraging me to retire so that, and to move closer to them so that they can kind of help us through this next phase of our lives. None of this was how I planned it or how I envisioned it, even as I underwent this previous surgery. But as I mentioned, the road to recovery this time around has been more than I have realized in the past. Now, as I think about the future of this church, I am convinced that it would be selfish for me to not get out of the way and let someone new with fresh vision and different strengths and giftings take your, this church to its next level in service to this community. God's call upon my life is a lifetime call. And while I don't as yet know how that's going to work its way out, I'm convinced it's still, that I can still be used in the, kingdom, in the kingdom. Maybe it will be my turn to be somebody else's pulpit supply. Maybe it will involve some sort of chaplaincy. Or maybe it will come about in my serving to be a coach or a mentor. I just don't know. And so I'm announcing today that I'm stepping down as your pastor, and I'm retiring due to health considerations. This week is my last Sunday together with you. Pastor Elaine will be with you next week. I've notified Aaron and, and, and Albert that, uh, about my decision, and they will be here to help you work through this transitional period. This is not something to mourn, because God moves people for reasons. And I am certain that God's work will continue here long after I'm gone. It's been my honor to serve you, and you have taken good care of both Debbie and myself, and for which we are deeply we're going to be moving to Olympia, Washington, so that we can be near both of our children. And I hope you guys will stay in touch with us, even in our absence, even from a distance. We're going to leave a little piece of our heart here, as we have in every single church that we've made our home. And just because I'm not your day-to-day -day pastor doesn't mean that you will not remain in my heart and in my prayers. So I want to encourage you to stay in touch. This has not been an easy decision for us. And honestly, I still have some, some mixed feelings about it but I do believe I've heard God's voice in the matter, and so I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, you who have called us by your name, watch over these, your servants. Give them wisdom as they search for their new pastor. Strengthen their hearts and their determination to hold on and remain faithful to each other and the ministries that are ongoing until such a time as you give them new direction. This is your church that you have placed here for your, as a unique expression to serve this community. Help them to remember that we are here to grow in grace and the knowledge of you and to serve one another in love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Will you join me for one final song before we close? Children, 
and now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that in the power of the Holy Spirit you might abound in love. Thanks so much for joining me today. God bless you. It's been my joy to be your pastor. Go in peace.